and welcome to the Magic of Marketing, where each week you get a hot tip to help you grow your business and change the world. I'm your host, Jennifer Trask, and this week is part two of one secret marketing tweak to help you make more money doing what you love. And if you didn't see last week's episode, you can uh, look at the, at the link below right there. You will be able to go back and see it if you missed it, because it is a really great video to help explain why we're doing what we're doing today. But essentially, what we came up with is one way that you can easily make more money and make more impact is to really focus and choose a very targeted niche that you are going to serve. And as mentioned in the first video from last week, now you've had a week to digest it and to really feel like, okay, I'm ready to do this. So what I promise in this video is that we're going to talk about ways to help you figure out what your actual niche is. So there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. The first thing you want to keep in mind is, is your business local, regional, national, or international? And hopefully the answer is international because of the internet today that it can be. But you do need to figure out, I mean, if you are a local practitioner and you would like to focus on the local market, then you need to do a little bit of research and figure out who's in the marketplace with the demographics and what are some of the problems uh, that tend to be in your local area that you can serve. So for example, if you are a holistic practitioner or a nutritionist, then you have a whole host of problems that you can solve. But maybe uh, in the area that you live, there's some predominant problems that you that a lot of the market tend to have. So that's up to you to go out because while I do want you to focus, you do have to make sure that it's a large enough focus that you will be able to get lots of clients to serve. But I don't want you to have the fear that it's that it's too small. Um, so f let me give you an example. Uh, so I live in Newfoundland in Canada, and unfortunately, we have actually one of the highest rates of obesity in the country, as well as cancer is pretty high here, and heart disease, and a few other. So if I was someone who could help one of those problems, I could easily focus on just one, just one, like just working with cancer patients or just working with obesity and, and getting weight loss down. Uh, that Very simple to build a business here just on one of those problems alone. So that's because I know the market and because it's here. So I need you to go out and figure out what the best problem is for the market that you want to serve. The next thing I want you to think about is, well, who do you want to work with? Who do you enjoy working with? Who do you not enjoy working with? Have you had clients, problems that tend to come up that you realize, I'm really good at helping solve this particular problem? That's a fantastic place to start because it can build your confidence. It's going to help you get a lot more referrals because people are getting more success. So it's going to help you grow a lot faster when you focus on a problem that you're really good at. The other side of that point is you got to remember Remember, depending on what business you're in, if you try to solve too many problems, you're going to spend way too much time researching and trying to figure out, well, how does this industry work or that industry or this problem or that problem? Whereas if you can really focus on a niche, then you really get to know that topic in depth or that industry in depth, again, depending on what you're doing. So that's why I really recommend that focusing on something that A, there definitely is a market so you can build a sustainable business on it. And B, it's something that you are really good at and that you really enjoy and you'd like to spend a lot of time there. And the third part of that is you can look at, you know, based on your current experience of all the clients you've had, really just sit for a minute, think about it, maybe make some notes, you know, who do you like working with? Who, how do, do you find, is there a certain um, prospect that will come to you and they're more open to open to your suggestions and doing what you what what you suggest to them and what the prescribed plan is and really identify you know who can you really help and who is receptive to your help and does it fit the marketplace so those are three things that you can look at to really make sure you are picking a niche that's right for you. And the other thing that I have to tell you is honestly, you kind of know, like your gut knows, you always know the answer. Uh, it's just a matter of, are you scared 
uh, to move forward with it? And is it more fear based on there's not enough people? And if that's the case, then you need to go out and do some research to find out, is that just fear because you're scared or is that a realistic one? Okay, that's not a really good problem for me to solve right now. Um, and I think you, we always usually know the answer to that question. It's always our, our gut will give us that checkpoint. So make sure you check into that, but your intuition usually knows. So, you know, pick out your top three favorites and then out of those, what makes the most sense based on who you are, who you like to serve, uh, what problems are in the area that you're going to serve, whether that's local, regional, national, or international. And then, you know what? Go for it. Go for it. Because I'm telling you, the more focused you are, the easier it is to talk about your business, the easier people can refer you, and the easier you can advertise even better, therefore attract better clients who are ready to pay you for you to help them solve that problem. Okay, so what do you think? What did you pick? Make sure you comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, what niche are you going to focus on? Did this help? Do you still not want to? Are you still scared? Why? You know, start the conversation below. What worked for you? What doesn't? And of course, as always, if you like this, please make sure you share in your social networks or email it over to a friend. And when you're done that, make sure you come on over to Jennifer Dress. Jennifer-Draft.com for free updates because we have lots of fun after the show on email as well. So thanks so much for watching the second part of this series. And if you missed the first one, the link is here again, so you can go to it and check it out and make sure you comment below because I love to hear the conversation after the show. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you next week for the magic of marketing. Bye.